Okay, this is, uh, this is the idea, uh, guys. Uh, tomorrow, we are going to finish with the explanation about the, the inverters. Let me we refresh a little about the, the theory about the marine generator. Suppose that uh, we have a boat and, uh, and the customer, the customer said that uh, the boat uh, doesn't have a, a generator. Uh, we, you need to install a generator, new one in, in that boat. The boat has a, a AC panel and uh, the AC panel, uh, the main breaker, the main breaker, this is the AC panel. In, a, in the main breaker, everybody see the picture? Yes. The main breaker is uh, 220 volts and is uh, 80 amps, 80 amps. And those are the breakers, no? Those are the breakers. Um, okay, you need a, you need to calculate the capacity. The, the step number one is uh, uh, calculate the capacity of uh, the generator in kilowatts. Uh, what is the procedure, guys, to calculate the capacity of the generator in kilowatts? The amount of load. Uh, okay. Uh, the load, you said? Each individual load, and after that, you add it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yes, this is good. Yeah, this is a good procedure. Uh, what is the most simple pro procedure to calculate that, uh, the, the capacity? Voltage times current. Correct. Uh, because you have the voltage, you have the voltage here, and you have the, the intensity. You can calculate the power is equal to the voltage times the intensity. How much is the voltage? 240. And the intensity, 80. Uh, this is, uh, how much is, uh, can you help to me? 240 times 80, please. 19,200. 19.2 kilowatts. Uh, you can install a generator of 20 kilowatts. Everybody follow me? Yes. yes. That's simple, no? It's not complicated. Uh, no. You need a, a generator of uh, 20 kilowatts. With 20 kilowatts is, uh, is enough for uh, all the loads that uh, are in the panel in this moment. This is the uh, step number one. What is the uh, step number two? You remember uh, the, this picture? You remember this picture, guys? Select location. Correct, select the location. And uh, what are the factors that uh, uh, I recommend when you select the location uh, for, a, for a generator. What is the, the, the number one? The water line with the heat exchanger? Correct, yeah. correct. The, the, the number one is the level of uh, the water line. The level of a uh, water line. And uh, you need to verify if the new generator will be located below the water line or over the water line or in the limit. Uh, that information is important for what? No salt water gets in your cylinders, the exhaust? Correct. To avoid that the water uh, enter uh, through, the, through the exhaust manifold and enter in the combustion chamber. Correct. This is, this is important for that. What is, the, what is the point? What is the element in the generator? Use it uh, like a point of reference uh, for, that, for that definition. The elbow. The elbow of the exhaust, correct. It is the point where uh, the salt water is mixed with the uh, smoke, with the gases. In that point, that point will be used like the point of reference. Okay, great, great. And uh, what other inform uh, uh, topic is important when you select the location of the generator? Fuel tank. Okay, the fuel tanks. Where are located the fuel tank and from uh, which tank I am going to suction the fuel and return uh, the excess of fuel. How, how much fuel in a diesel engine is used uh, in the combustion chamber and how much fuel return in the fuel tank? 20 and 80. 80%, 20, 80 return. 80 percent return into the tank at high temperature. That's, that's, that's important. Okay, great. Number three, what is the three factor when you, when you try to install a new generator? The batteries? Uh, yes, where I am going to locate where I am going to locate the battery bank, no? Uh, is a good idea uh, exclusive battery bank or can you use the cranking batteries exclusive. of uh, other engines? Exclusive. 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 exclusive battery bank. What type of batteries are recommended when you install a generator? Okay. Excuse me? 
deep cycle cranking what type of battery cranking. 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 cranking batteries because this is an engine this is a motor okay cranking batteries not deep cycle great and uh, what is the other recommendation uh, with respect to the batteries and uh, the separation with the engine can I install the batteries uh, in front of the boat, in the bow of the boat, and the generator in the engine room in the back? You want them close as possible? No. As close as possible, as close as possible to avoid excessive voltage drop. Great, excellent. What is the other factor important in that decision of the location of the, the generator? Dry area. Excuse Hot me? water. Correct. Where will will be located? Where will be located the 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 raw water seacock? No, the raw water seacock. Okay. What is the recommendation? Uh, is good idea share the seacock with the seacock of the engine? No. No. Separate the seacock <clears throat> as close as possible. Great. Great. Uh, and uh, of, of course. A individual uh, a seawater strainer. Uh, what is the recommendation? What is the recommendation of uh, the location of uh, the seawater strainer and the location of uh, the raw water pump? Both of them should be located on side of the stringers. No, below, below the, the water line. line. Below, the water line. below the water line. Below the water line. What happened if the raw water pump, we are going to learn more about this in the next coming classes in, in the summer in diesel and gasoline. What happened if the raw water pump is located in the limit of the water line or a little higher? It won't have enough, it won't have enough PSI, like pressure to push no, out. No, it no. It won't have constant water in it? And no, it's because if the raw water pump is located a little over the water line in some moments, suction air and what happened the water the air the air burn the impeller because the impeller of the raw water pump marine raw water pump is flexible in rubber if the raw water pump suction air the raw water burns and uh, is destroyed the raw water pump this is the problem for that reason the raw water pump should be located always always below the water line this is a critical point that uh, later Mr. Rodriguez and me, we are going to explain in both courses in gasoline and diesel. Uh, this, is, uh, this is an important factor of our decision when you install an engine or generator in a boat. Okay, the, the position of the raw water pump. Okay, number five, what other element is important to take in consideration when you install a generator? You have the battery bank, the raw water, the fuel tank, the location of the engine uh, with respect to the water line. What other factor is important? How much apps? The apps. How much, how much what? The app level. Like how many? How much? How much power can it give off? The power in kilowatts? No, because this is the step number one. You calculate, you calculate the power in kilowatts uh, according with the capacity of the AC panel. No. This is this is the step number one. Or, the remote pan, remote panel. Okay, where is where will be located the remote panel? Uh, what this is important. The remote panel. Why this is an important factor? That the generator's control. Correct. The control. Uh, where is located the control? It's important because. Um, uh, uh, you need order the harness uh, according with the, the distance, the separation in between the generator and the position of the panel. Uh, uh, the manufacturer, they have a standard harness for, uh, for 15 feet of separation, 25 feet of separation, and 35 feet of separation. You need measure uh, and verify where should be located the panel. And also the most important is verify where will be routed the, the cables of the harness. What happens if uh, those cables are close to the lighting protection cables? Or what happens if those if the harness is pretty close to the antenna cables, the antenna of the VHF radio? What happened in that case? Interference. Too much interference, too much noise, uh, and uh, you can affect the performance of, uh, of, uh, of the remote panel. 
uh, what happened if uh, those the, the harness is uh, in the same in the same bundle uh, with the with the lighting protection cables? What happened during the storm? They're gonna get hot, maybe burn. Correct, correct, exactly. For that reason, you need to be careful where you pass the remote the harness. The harness should be separated from AC cables. The harness should be separated from a lighting protection cable and bonding cables. The harness should be separated from antenna cables. We are going to learn in the next class, in, in, in two weeks, we'll start with the uh, electronics. In electronics, we are going to learn why the antenna cables, VHF cables and UHF cables should be separated because it's very high frequency and ultra high frequency. And uh, those cables produce excessive electromagnetic interference. The remote, the remote cable, the harness, should be separated from all of those uh, contaminating cables. Okay, guys? Uh, any other factor you think is important when you take a decision? Uh, we need added one more that I explained. Very, very important. Away from the propeller. Correct. Where, where should be placed the, the generator inside of the engine room? It is located exactly over the propeller. You can introduce a lot of vibration. Uh, the, the location, the location with respect to the to the propeller. This is important. Okay, great. This is the step number two. Uh, is uh, is uh, the location number three is a uh, uh, prepare. Uh, you remember this uh, uh, this uh, a poster? You can't see it, can't see it over. Tomorrow we are going to to check that poster. Oh, and number go. three is prepare the feeding, the hoses, the filters, and install the fuel system. Once again, the fuel system should be separated completely, completely uh, from the engines, and um, no, no, use different uh, fuel filters, use different uh, water separator filters, and uh, you can use uh, the starboard side tank or the port tank, but. Uh, no, the filters, the, fi the filters should be separated. Number four is uh, uh, prepare hoses, elbows, adapters, uh, in order to install the muffler. The muffler is a, a other important element. How is the recommendation according with the videos uh, uh, of uh, the location of uh, the, the muffler with respect to the generator? Like six inches below? Exactly, one, two inches below below the, the bottom of the generator. This is basically because uh, the container of the muffler, uh, internally one third is full of water and two thirds uh, is uh, air. If, if you install the muffler at the same level of the generator or a little higher, uh, it's easy that uh, the generator suction water and the water enter in the, in, the, in, the, in the head, in the combustion chamber through the exhaust valves. Yes, the, the, the muffler should be located one inches or two inches below the, the bottom of the generator. This is an important factor, guys. If you have a, a problem with the generator and uh, you apply for a warranty, uh, the company, the manufacturer send inspectors and the inspector, the first element uh, that I check is the location of the muffler with respect to the generator. This is very, very important. Okay, this is number four. Number five okay, is- Professor, can, can you go over the anti-siphon on that point? Oh, yeah, the anti-siphon. Um, okay, suppose that uh, you you decide install the generator in a, in a place that uh, is in the limit of the water line with respect to the elbow or a little below uh, this is an indication that the generator will be located below the water line. In that case, in that particular case, you need to install in the output of the generator, uh, uh, the exhaust system. Let me show to you the exhaust system. Uh, this is the situation uh, with, the, with the muffler. Uh, the muffler. The muffler should be located uh, below the level of the of, of the bottom of the generator. Okay, one anti-siphon, guys. Look, this is the output of the heat exchanger, and uh, this is the elbow. If the engine is located below the water line, this is the water line. You need to install that anti-siphon passing passing the level of the water line. Ah, uh, excuse me. Uh, sorry, this is not the water line. The water line is this. This is. You see the water line. Okay, because this generator, 
uh, the elbow is located in the limit of the water line, it's necessary to install this anti-siphon device. This anti-siphon device. That one. Okay, you see, you see here? The anti-siphon here? You see the anti-siphon over there? Yep. Guys? Nice. Yep. Okay, all right. Uh, this is uh, in between the, in between, and the other anti-siphon is in the exhaust. The exhaust pipe should be located 12 inches over the water line, and it's important to create as an special uh, curve on, a, on the exhaust uh, pipe, uh, like this, like this one, to avoid, if this is the level, if uh, this is the level of the water line, to avoid that in some cases, because the movement of the boat, the water enter and penetrate into the into the muffler. Uh, you see that, that that picture, guys? Yes. Okay. Let me show other picture. Okay. Basically, you have the anti siphon here. Um, I have a question. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the muffler, I didn't know. Okay, so the muffler is not on outboards, right? No, no, no. In outboard, you don't have mufflers because no, the, the outboards yeah. they have the lower unit submerged in the water all the time. This is different because in this particular case, this is an engine located inside of the boat. Look at this. This is the transom. This is the transom. And this is the bottom of the boat, the bilge of the boat. The engine is inside. The generator is inside. For that reason, you have muffler. You have a silencer here. Uh, the outboard is a different consideration. In so, um, what about inboard, outboard? Would inboard, outboard have a muffler? The inboard outboard is basically an outboard because the, the drive unit is located outside with the, you, you remember the drive unit is located outside with the, the propeller, the propeller here uh, and, and, uh, and uh, the raw water is located outside. This is a, a special consideration in, in summer, we are going to talk about those units, outboards and inboard outboards. Okay guys, okay. for today, for today, we are going to be concentrated in inboards and the generator because the generator is located inside of the water line. The anti-siphon device, the IT, the anti-siphon device is this. It's an special, um, it's an special, uh, uh, like a elbow with a, re a respirator to to release air here, and to avoid that the water that the water penetrate the engine. Uh, you have one anti-siphon device here, and uh, this is an special like an uh, anti-siphon. This is the exhaust pipe. You go over the water line, you go a little higher, and after that, you connect externally. Let me show to you exactly. This is a uh, this is the typical installation when the generator is located <laughs> over the water line because this is the level of the elbow. He's here. That generator is considered over the water line, and this one in the bottom. Is, is located below the water line. For that reason, this anti-siphon device. Anybody follow me? Yep. Yeah. Okay, guys. Yes, sir. That's, that's clear, no? Other element that uh, I hope explain tomorrow is uh, uh, the water separator. The water separator is, is very simple. You see here we have uh, located the, the muffler, no? And uh, now this is this, this special rectangle, they have two divisions in fiberglass. One division here and other division, sorry, and other division here. When the gases, when the gases with raw water is coming here, in the middle for gravity, the water goes down. The water goes down. And here continue only the gases. And here. Finally, here you have gases gases and in the bottom you have water for that reason the name of this element let me let me make a picture new picture here you have a division here in in, in fiberglass and you have another division here in fiberglass and here are the gases the gases with water gases with water in the middle, when the gases and water pass for the middle, the water for gravity go down. And only the gases pass in the other side. And finally, you have gases here and water in the middle. This is the typical water separator. There are a lot of manufacturers, Western Big, 
color on and they they require install water separator. Why do you think that a, a water separator is a good choice when you install a marine generator? Why do you think that is better the water separator instead of the regular exhaust pipe with the gases mixed with water? Why do you think that is better the gases, pure gases, and the water separated in other pipe? Because you don't want them to mix. And if they mix, then that will be... No, nothing. no, because this is you in the... Smoke. No, exactly. This is excellent when you have the pure gases, not mix it with the water. It's easy for the diagnosis. It's easy, it's easy to identify if you have white smoke, if you have blue smoke, if you have black smoke, uh, if you have problem with the oil, if you have problem with the fuel, if you have a problem with the humidity entering in the combustion chamber. For that reason, if you have the gases separated from the water, it's easy the diagnosis. But uh, this is topic for uh, the summer classes, uh, diesel and gas. For that reason, I don't enter in too much details because in summer we are going to talk with more details about the engine. Now we are going to be concentrated in the electrical, in the electrical part of, of the generator. Okay, until this point is clear, my friends, let me. I have a question about, um, does the Raycor filter do the exact same thing? Does it filter air as well as um, water or is it just? Yeah, let me explain what happened. The, Ray, the Raycor Parker filter, the Raycor Parker filter is, uh, is, uh, is um, a, is a water separator filter. Let me let me share again uh, this book, uh, this old book. Okay, let me show it to you. The the Raycor Parker filter is also called the water separator filter. It's used to separate the fuel uh, for the water and uh, verify if the fuel uh, entering in the in the engine is uh, is uh, contaminated with water. Uh, those filters are located uh, in the bilge, uh, pretty close to the generator, pretty close to the engine. And uh, the function is uh, separate the water uh, uh, and the fuel. Uh, remember that uh, if uh, salt water enter in the in the fuel, uh, uh, if salt water enter in the combustion chamber, this is catastrophic, and you can uh, destroy the engine. I have a special. Uh, you see that that picture that I have in the. I, I like I like to add one thing about that filter. Uh, let me explain something about this, right? Because whether it's generator, diesel, gasoline, outboard, whatever the case may be, you should always have a filter. So if you took water and you had gas mixed together, picture oil and vinegar. Water's heavy. It'll sit on the bottom and the gas will sit on top just like the vinegar. So what happens as you, as the, fil the fuel flows through the filter, okay, the, the water will settle at the bottom of the filter and the filter will take out whatever little contaminant that hasn't dropped to the bottom, which is a 10 micron filter, which will filter the fuel so you have fresh fuel. The thing is, is now the Raycor filter, just like the Parker has a clear bottom on it, which is nice because there's a petcock that you can, with, you can drain the water out of the system without taking the whole filter off. Now that picture that Alvaro was showing before that doesn't have a glass bottom, Every time you want to check, inspect if there's water in the fuel, you'd have to empty it into a white bucket to see the contaminants. Like like this, Danny, like this. That is a Raycor filter, okay? So that, that allows you to see the fuel quality and drain the water that whatever access. Like, so let's say you're driving from the Bahamas, uh, to, the Bahamas to, to, the, to the United States. There's no gas station in between, so you're going to have to drain it and keep an eye on it. Now, I had a customer tell me the other day, which was funny. It wasn't funny to him, but I didn't laugh at him. I just, he, he thought because I trimmed, I lifted the boat up to wash it. Cause I told him there was water in the fuel. And he was telling me, oh, that's because you lifted the front of the boat. So I had to explain to him, just like I explained to you is only when fuels flowing through a Raycor system will water accumulate just because you trimmed the boat, boat up. Doesn't mean water will go to the, to the filter. Now, if the motor's up, if you think about it, every time you drive a boat, whether it's diesel, gas, or whatever, as soon as you get on plane, when get on plane means the boat coming out of the water, if there is any water in the, in the boat, it's going to accumulate to the back of the boat where there's usually a pickup for the feeds to the, through, the, uh, through the system to the Raycor. 
So that's if he was he wasn't he just thought because I lifted it up. But I just want you to understand if you have water and the fuel, the glass bowl is probably the best of all the scenarios. So you can keep an eye and monitor it. You can put fuel additives in the fuel tank. But that's only going to help so far. But the generator, gasoline, diesel, whatever the, whatever the combustible engine, you should always recommend to put a fuel filter. Not every boat has it, but the majority of them do. Oh, um, I just wanted to is, explain is, that on there. Is, is the filter on the engine or on the generator? Okay, there's sometimes like, there's it? two. Sometimes there's one in the boat, and there's one already built on the engine. The thing, the whole idea of having two is because the one that's in the boat should catch catch it and you can see it. The one on the engine is just like a regular filter. You can't see it, so, but it's, it gives you an indication. Now, some motors have the ability that has these two little electrodes that go into the fuel filter that when water makes contact, it makes continuity and causes the alarm to go off, depending on what system you're working on. That's why it's important that any motor that you're working on, at least in the beginning, you should always have a service menu so you can go back and use it as a reference to check out which system you have. I have a question about um, when you're draining the water. So you drain it to the point where you can't see it or it's a minimal amount in the bottom. Right. And you have to go back and put any more fuel in because I know there's mm. going to be a Well, on the diesel, yes. On yes. the gasoline, no. No. So okay. there would be no issue for gasoline with air getting into the fuel line. and No, because what happens is, because uh, there's already fuel in this system, it's not it's not pressurized as much as like the the diesel is. And remember, we use spark. Diesel right. diesel uses heat and compression to ignite the fuel. We have spark, so even if you have a little bit of fuel, it'll still ignite. It just run like crap, but it'll eventually it'll eventually get caught up. Okay. So every, every listen, here's another rule. Anytime you change a fuel filter, you should make a habit of filling up the fuel filter before you install it with fresh fuel. Yeah, this is uh, this is true. In gasoline, you, uh, the explosion is produced for a spark, and uh, doesn't matter if the fuel is contaminated uh, with the uh, water or oil. Uh, if uh, if uh, if the spark uh, uh, is activated, ignite the mixture. But uh, in diesel, no. In diesel, uh, the 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 fuel, the pure fuel, enter in a combustion chamber properly preheated of pure air. If the air have the pressure more than 400 psi and the temperature around 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, the, the 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 fuel atomized ignite. If not, not. If the pressure is below 400 psi and the temperature is less than 1,000 degrees Fahrenheit, you 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 spray the fuel and the fuel never ignite. This is a particular property of diesel. We are going to learn later that that particular property. In gasoline, no, because doesn't matter if. Uh, the mixture is contaminated. Uh, if the gasoline is part of the mixture, uh, when you introduce the spark, ignite the mixture. That's the difference between the gasoline engines and diesel engines, but uh, wait a little. In, in two months, we are doctors in gasoline and diesel. Okay, guys? In this picture, I have the two anti-siphons. One here in the elbow, uh, in between the elbow and the, uh, and the heat exchanger, you see that one is here. And uh, other one in the in the exhaust pipe. The exhaust pipe is recommended goes up, and after that here out. This is the typical picture about the, the, the location of the water uh, of the anti siphon devices. Tomorrow I am going to explain again quickly where are located those anti siphon devices before we advance with the next topic with the with the inverters. And uh, okay, we are going to to, to check quickly uh, the troubleshooting. Hi. Guys, uh, when you have problems related with low frequency or under frequency, uh, what is what is the problem? That problem is related with what? Your air RPM, RPMs. Fuel contaminated or air, uh, air filter clogging. And uh, this is a typical indication that uh, you have a, a, a low RPMs and immediately the computer of the generator sends low RPMs and produce the code low frequency or UF under frequency. Okay, and, uh, and uh, this is, uh, this is uh, basically because you have bad filters, mm -hmm. bad injectors, fuel contaminated, air in the water, bad uh, fuel pump, fuel solenoided. This is the thing. for that reason you have low frequency. Other one is high frequency or over frequency. 
And uh, what is, uh, where is located that problem? The governor. The governor. It's an excess of RPMs. It's basically a mechanical problem in the governor, in the governor of the generator. In, in the summer, we are going to learn that that problem could be also a problem with the throttle position sensor. The, 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 the butterfly located in the, in the throttle uh, is, uh, is not closing properly, stay close a little more and uh, produce overspeed. Uh, this is other possibility. Later, we are going to learn about that. But this is basically a mechanical problem. It's not a problem in the winding. It's not a problem. Uh, it's not an electrical problem. It's a mechanical problem. Both situations, low frequency and high frequency, are mechanical problems on the engine of the generator. Mechanical problem, no electrical problem. What happens if, uh, if I have a high voltage and the, the, the high voltage, the output voltage is excessive voltage? more than 160, for example, 180 volts in one phase. Where can I, can I check that one? In the voltage regulator, can I adjust that excessive output voltage? No. no. Not if it's more than 10%. No, this is, this is normally on the back end. You need to isolate the phases and check with what? Mega with the megometer, with the mega. Tomorrow we are going to use the megometer and we are going to verify what that. What happened if the output voltage is a little is a little higher? For example, 130 volts, no 120, 130. Can I adjust that that ex, 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 a little higher voltage? Yes. 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 Less than 10%. In the voltage regulator, in the volt, in, in the spot voltage, that one, the first one, you see? Uh, what is the procedure? Can you refresh me? What is the procedure to, to calibrate the voltage if the if the output voltage is a little higher, not too much? Have it running ten percent. You lower. Okay, so you, need, you need to connect your voltmeter. Where you connect your voltmeter? On the phase output. In the breaker, in the output breaker of the generator. Correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, and uh, you set the voltmeter in volts AC. You start the generator. Uh, you start the generator with the, all the loads applied in the AC panel or no loads? No loads. No loads, correct. And, uh, and you verify with your voltmeter how much is the voltage. Okay, it's 130. Immediately you start to adjust this spot, the, the spot volts. Uh, slowly, slowly, slowly. Normally it's, it's moving uh, clockwise, clockwise, and you verify how much is the output voltage. Ah, oh, 127, 125, 122, 120. Immediately, the, the output voltage is 120. What is the next step? Apply loads. Apply load and verify if the generator stay the voltage 120. Perfect. That's the procedure. That's the procedure. What is the function of the second ball? The, the ball stabilization if your gauge is moving around it's not correct. voltage it's, fluctuating it's fluctuating that's that's correct if the voltage is fluctuating you can adjust you can fix it that fluctuation with the second spot stabilization what is the meaning of the last one the normally the name is gain gain what Have is the you apply load how long it takes to get back up Correct. It's, it's a, the time that the generator spends to recover the RPMs when you apply heavy loads. And uh, once again, with the voltmeter connected in the output breaker of the generator, you move slightly that spot, the, the spot of the gain, the last one, and you calibrate the, free, uh, the gain, the response of the generator when the heavy loads are applied. That's, that's, that's great. I am, I am happy, my friend, because... I think that you understand this chapter. Okay. Have, yeah. Can you overgain. Excuse me. Can you like overgain? Do gain too much? No, no, no. It's not possible. It's not possible. And I never, I never hear about that situation, and uh, and I never see that situation. Uh, just, when you when the generator is in great, in great calibration. When you apply the loads, the generator respond immediately, decrease the RPM for a fraction of milliseconds and recover immediately. Uh, you, you say, Danny, something? Yeah, you don't, do you damage the capacitor if you go over, overdo it, the capacitor yeah. in the regulator? 
No, immediately, but uh, this is a great, great, great uh, question, Danny. If you try to continue uh, at, uh, moving the, the spot for gain, uh, uh, the consequence is this. Uh, the generator uh, uh, está, uh, in minimum, in idle, is fluctuating. <laughs> Ah, accelerate and decelerate like similar when you have problems of air in the intake manifold in the engine, Danny. Uh, mm. the, 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 the generator accelerate and decelerate constantly in idle. Uh, this is the symptom when you when you introduce too much gain, too much response. Yeah, and then you need decrease, decrease the gain, decrease the gain until the acceleration of the generator is stable. Okay. And, the, and the one that you said about in the classroom uh, that we blew out the, the capacitor and you that was that was the, it was that the uh, the frequency? No, no. It's because the people try to adjust adjust the voltage. For example, the, ah, the voltage. The, That's what the it voltage is. is more than ten percent. The difference is, for example, one eighty volts in the output, and the people try to uh, uh, reduce that excessive voltage with the first spot with the spot volts. And uh, they move it and move it and move it that that spot and uh, explode the capacitor of the voltage regulator. Okay. So the right. only the volt only the voltage adjustment would be the one that would cause the capacitor. Everything else would just not do. It will not damage the 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 unit. Uh, yeah, the other one no damage. Only only affect the performance of the generator in idle. Uh, you hear that accelerate and decelerate constantly. But the first one can damage the voltage regulator immediately uh, if you adjust too much. Or if you try to reduce excessive output voltage with that spot. Okay, guys. Yes. Uh, this is the voltage regulator. Uh, this is the second spot, stabilization. And uh, for when you calibrate stabilization, I recommend use an analog multimeter. Uh, because with the analog multimeter, you can see if the needle is moving moving back and forward. This is uh, nice for, for that purpose. Uh, okay. I, like, I like to make a comment about the analog in, in the digital. Excuse the me? analog is definitely, when I say precise to the, to, the, to, the, to the movements, the digital is so fast, it's hard to, de to determine that if, it, if there's a problem, I'm going to, I'm going to explain this a little more in gasoline, but just think of a throttle position sensor as the throttle body opens on it. It gives a voltage for the computer to know. So you want an easy, even sweep. It could be a sticky part and all set, but you would never find that in a digital meter. So there's some applications when we're in the gasoline that you're going to need an analog. And then there, most of the cases you'll need a digital, but it's just so you can see the, the sweep or, or see if there's bouncing, you know, it's the same thing as a, a fuel pump gauge, you know, you and a, and a needle, you can see that it's going up and down as there's a problem and, and the digital is just, is too erratic and you can't, you really can't see it. And I'll, I'll explain that a little more in detail the next time we, when we're in gasoline or diesel. When, when do we start working on engines? Well, yeah, you got to get through this first. You got to pass this class. <laughs> <laughs> now, 